In this series of videos, I want to talk about the men behind the mechs. The designers of the Gundams, mobile suits and mechs of models we know, enjoy and customise. In this video we'll be taking a look at the man who defined what it is to be a mechanical designer in mecha and anime, Kunio Okawara. Starting out as a graduate in graphic design from Tokyo's OK University, Kunio started out working for a fashion design company, drawing backgrounds for display advertising. In 1972, after gaining a gig at animation studio Tatsunoko Production, the art director for the awesomely titled Science Ninja Team Gachaman, later titled and torn to shreds for Western audiences as Battle of the Planets, Mitsuki Nakamura put Kunio to task on designing enemy mecha for the show's Heroes to Battle. Kunio moved on to also work on Hurricane Polymer and Tekaman, the Space Knight, soon after. Kunio's success in these animations led to Nakamura and Okawara founding an internal design department of Tatsunoko called the Mechaman Design Office, and the first ever title of mechanical designer was attributed to Okawara. His first lead design job was for the animation Go Wapa 5 Godem. In 1978, Kunio struck out on his own, becoming a freelancing mechanical designer, still occasionally working for Tatsunoko, and later joining Nippon Sunrise, which later went on to become Sunrise Incorporated. At Sunrise, Kunio met and worked with, for the first time, an upcoming director, Yoshiyuki Tomino, on the Super Robot Show, Invincible Steel Man Daitan 3. Soon after, Tomino asked Okawara to work with him on a new robot concept show titled Gunboy, instructing Okawara to work on a more realistic suit of powered armour that was similar to the likes of the powered armour described in the Robert H. Heinlein novel Starship Troopers. What Okawara designed was to become one of the world's most iconic and most long-lasting lead robots of any animated series, the RX-78-2 Gundam. Okawara also designed the immortal Zaku, Dom and Ain't No Zaku Goof and kickstarted the craze that would become Gumpla. Throughout the development of the Mobile Suit Gundam series, Okawara continued to design a plethora of recognisable mobile suits for the franchise and inspired many others, including the likes of Hajime Kotoki, to create new iterations of his original designs. Okawara continued to work on other robot series throughout the 1980s, notably for the very popular Armoured Trooper Votums. In the 1990s, Okawara turned back to designing classic super robots, working on the series Brave X Kaiser, and designing every super robot for the Brave series, most notably Gal Gygar. Okawara continued designing multiple mobile suits for the Gundam franchise, right up until 2010's Gundam Unicorn. Okawara's personal favourite mecha design is the Shippu Iron Liga, a relatively obscure future sport mech based children's show which I have never seen. Kunio Okawara's designs can be best described as adaptive. Starting out in the super robot field, robots of immense size and peculiar dimension, to the slim, swift and small designs for Gundam Seed, Okawara's designs have encompassed a whole world of possibility in mecha design pushing the limits of style, presence, armament and aesthetic to mecha fans for over 50 years. Kunio Kawara for me is the very definition of a mecha designer. Having no fixed look to his designs and taking influence from other mech designers from all over the world. Okawara manages to successfully create the intended feel of every animation he works on, be it a super serious dark space opera, or a gaudy, super colourful, seizure-inducing kids' robo-battlefest. In a 2016 interview for Forbes magazine, Okawara states, The way I think of my work is to realise what the director wants as close as I possibly can to his imagination. So I don't think I'm an artist, but maybe more of an artisan. 
The creation of animation is not something that only one person can do either, as it is definitely a team-based endeavour. So one person's insistence should not delay the whole process, because a project's schedule is very tightly planned to coincide with things like broadcasting dates and all that. My priority then is how I receive the project, understand it and then how quickly I can get to the output stage. I don't spend too much time thinking whether the design is good or bad. It is just that I receive the commission and then my output from that. Now that's called being modest, a true pro.